Welcome to Just a Minute. Thank you, thank you, hello, my name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute walls fades away, once more it's my huge pleasure to welcome our many listeners throughout the world, but also to welcome to the program this week four talented, exuberant, <laughs> and delightful players of this game. Once again, they've come together to show their ingenuity with words, their ability with humor and verbal dexterity as they try and speak on a subject that I give them, and they try and do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. And those four are seated on my right, Tony Hawks and Giles Brandreth, and seated on my left, Janie Godley and Kit Hesketh Harvey. Please welcome all four of them. <laughs> Seated beside me is Trudy Stevens, who's going to help me with the score, and she will blow a whistle when the 60 seconds are up. And uh, this particular show is coming from the Corn Exchange in that delightful town on the Norfolk coast, Kings Lynn. And we have an enthusiastic audience who have returned because they heard how good it was the last time we were in Kings Lynn. And uh, we're going to begin the show with Giles Brandreth. Oh, a nice topical subject to begin the show, Norfolk Broads. <laughs> oh, yes, you've met a few in your time, obviously. 60 seconds as usual, Giles, starting now. We call them Norfolk Broads because that's what they are. A couple of gorgeous King's Lynn girls, broad of beam and soft to the touch. They wear Norfolk jackets and smoke pipes. I gave them loose tobacco for Christmas. They said, thanks for the shag. They're those sorts of men. In this part of the country, you find big-hearted birthers. In fact, their names... Janie Challenge. Big. The big hearted yeah. is And there. he said two big yes, ladies two, they before. Were big, yes. They were two big girls. Big hearted has a is one word. No, one is a big hyphenated heart. word, doesn't matter, it's big. You repeated the word big. It's separated from heart. Oh, you better give him it, no, Nicholas, no, he's getting we're all not, we're not, we're not working in, in a literary sense, we're working in an oral sense. But, so big was repeated. So, um, Janie, you have a correct challenge. So you get a point for that, of course, in this game. <laughs> you take over cost. the subject, and there are 36 seconds still available, and it's Norfolk Broads starting now. I came to the Norfolk Broads in 1982. I hired a boat in Setford, and I went away up the river. And... <laughs> Kit, you challenge. Look, I'm sorry to, to, to pull the local one on here, but if you had a boat in Thetford, you would... <laughs> you nowhere near the Norfolk Broads we had. Yeah. I picked up the boatman in there and he drove us to the river. <laughs> okay, that was a big lie. Because obviously this game is all about the exact truth. No. You can pick up an awful lot of things in Thetford. Thetford yeah. <laughs> No, but I think when you go into the surreal, we know, but when you're making a statement which is factual, yeah, I agree. Uh, you can't go that far. Norfolk Broads, 30 seconds with you, uh, Kit, starting now. The wenches of the Fen have to be big because they're built for potato lifting, sugar beet mashing, turkey strangling. This is a fantastic race of people. The Norfolk Broads were built when they dig for peat, apparently. A Giles Challenge. Repetition of built. Built, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, you're built. absolutely right, the Giles. Built, I right. so defer. That's all right. <laughs> 17 seconds with you, Giles, on the Norfolk Broads, starting now. Coastal erosion means it is only a matter of time before Thetford is indeed the point at which we set up for our holiday on the Norfolk Broads. A thousand years from now, when Nicholas is still presiding over the <laughs> millennium plus 40 edition of Just a Minute, there will be a seaside programme coming from the Norfolk Broads. <laughs> So, Giles Brandreth was speaking, then as the whistle went, and in this game, whoever is doing that gains an extra point. And you won't be surprised to know that he's in the lead at the end of the round. Janie Godley has one, Kit Hesketh Harvey has one, Tony has yet to speak. Janie Godley, <laughs> would you like to take the, the lead in the second subject? It's called Under the Influence. Can you tell us something about that subject? I don't think there's any personal having chosen this for you, Janie. And uh, 60 seconds, as usual, starting now. 
Most people think that being a Glaswegian, you are very often under the influence. Contrary to popular belief, I don't actually drink alcohol. I do, in fact, eat loads of chocolate, which is an addiction in itself. As long as it's not flavoured by whiskey, I will be fine in most circumstances. Under the influence is how I lived my life. I owned a bar in Glasgow and made lots of money. Uh, Tony, a challenge. I think she said Glasgow twice. And no. unfortunately, she did. Yeah. She said, as I'm a Glaswegian, yes. they think that I would therefore yeah. be under yeah. influence. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. nice. been it's a bit like being a thick Bordonian. It, it wasn't cunning. It was the way you play the game for effect and win. Mm. So she had an incorrect challenge. She gets another point for that. And she still has 38 seconds to go under the influence if she can, starting now. I love alcohol. I'm often known for uh, my drinking. I know. Challenge. Get your challenge. I'm sorry, she did say alcohol I know, before. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I always forget that you can't Yes, it. I know, it's vicious, isn't it, this yeah. game? Let's change and and then they interrupt you, also, and you have to try and remember what you said so before. Nice. You know you really <laughs> want it, come on. <laughs> uh, all right, 35 seconds are still available, uh, and it's with you, Kit, under the influence, starting now. Nicholas is under the influence of Snatogen and Benadryl. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, challenge. Was there a bit of a hesitation? Did he stumble? There was a bit of a hesitation. Was, yes. I, I was a bit I, under the influence, I'm yes, afraid. Yes, yes. And actually, I'd give it to you, give it to you anyway <laughs> after what you've just said. <laughs> right, correct challenge. Hesitation. Tony, with you. 33 seconds. Under the influence, starting now. We are all under the influence of Chairman Nicholas, who leads us with such valiant skill. Uh, kit challenge. Deviation. <laughs> I always thought you were my friend. <laughs> that was a really cheap laugh. It was a cheap really laugh. laugh. No, it doesn't bear even thinking. I about can't himself. even no. give you a bonus point. No, no, you can't. No, I, and I can't I, even I, take I, one away, which I like might. to do. <laughs> so, Tony, 26 seconds still available under the influence, starting now. I once recorded a radio pilot under the influence with Rory McGrath. He was a very bad influence on me bringing a bottle of wine out and placing it between us as this panel game went on. At the time, I thought I was being hilarious. Then when I listened to it back, it was deeply embarrassing, and I swore never to do it again. And to this day, I have remained faithful to that promise. The other man, on the other hand, has... <laughs> oh. Kit, you challenged. Sorry, other. It was fascinating. Yes. He said other gather. twice. Yes. Yeah. Half a second you got on, under the influence, starting now. Giles is on poppers. <laughs> <laughs> so at the end of that round, Kit Hesketh Harvey was speaking as a whistle. Wayne gained that extra point, and he's taken a commanding lead. <gasps> he's two ahead of all the others. <laughs> now, Kit, it's actually your turn to begin another topical subject here. Sandringham. Tell us something about... S it's in Norfolk, isn't it? <laughs> 60 seconds, kit starting now. Sandringham is indeed in Norfolk. It's the big house to the very beautiful town in which we now sit. Kingslip. Oh! Giles. Hesitation. We call that hesitation, Giles, mm -hmm. yes. Sandringham is with you. And there are 55 seconds available starting now. There is an invisible moat surrounding Her Majesty the Queen. Nobody is entirely normal with her. But when our gracious lady is at Sandringham, she relaxes, playing Scrabble with the corgis, watching her husband, the Duke of Edinburgh, scrubbing around in the bushes looking for local birds. It's wonderful to see the royal couple at their most easy, because Sandringham was actually acquired by Queen Victoria in 1862 as a gift for her son, then Prince of Wales. He wanted somewhere to go with his wife. In fact, he wanted to leave Alexandra there while he went in search Tony of challenge you. Hmm? It's very, very interesting, but you've been challenged. Oops, well, that's who wanted. Well, yeah, he wanted. He wanted to go, she wanted to go, he wanted to go. And that's yeah. repetition. And Do you, you want, want to go? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so excited I can contain myself. The, um, 23 seconds, Tony. It's with you now. Sandringham, starting now. I can tell you many more interesting facts about Sandringham than Giles Brandreth. I just don't want to show off. <laughs> but what I will do is tell you that I... <laughs> <laughs> Kit Challenge. Sorry to tell you. Yeah, we yeah, will I'm tell sorry. you, yes. yes. He was struggling there. <laughs> 12 seconds. <laughs> Sandringham's back with you, Kit, starting now. Sandringham actually has its own time zone because the Prince of Wales so liked his birds, he had the Clocks fixed so that the world. Ah! <laughs> I thought you said something quite disgusting then. <laughs> no. 
The clocks fix yes, those hair, Nicholas. <laughs> Clocks. Clocks. Yes, that's, that's what you wanted to yes. say. It came out as a. It as did a not. <laughs> did it really? And uh, Giles, you've got in with six seconds on Sandringham starting now. George the Sixth acquired Sandringham from the Duke of Windsor. Uh, curiously. Kit challenged again. Acquired. He said acquired. Yeah. acquired no, no, yes. no, bought earlier. Was it? Mm. Hang on, I'll check. Mm. Play the tape back. Could you just check your notes, Janie? Okay. There's a lovely picture of Thetford. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> No, you said bought before a thing. I'm You're sorry. quite right, Giles. You did say bought. Three seconds with you, Giles, on Sandringham starting now. The croquet lawn at Sandringham is something to be seen to be believed because it really is the most. <laughs> <laughs> So Giles was speaking as the whistle went and showing off his knowledge of Sandringham there, because he obviously spends a lot of time up there, <laughs> uh, helped him get a lot of points, and he's taken the lead now, one ahead of Kit Hesketh Harvey, and two or three ahead of Tony Hawks and Janie Godley in that order. Um, Tony, would you start the next round? The subject is A Charmed Life. Tell us something about that in this game, starting now. The life of a just-a-minute panellist is surely a charmed life. The opportunity to come to a beautiful place like King's Lynn, to sit on a stage, talk for one minute without hesitating, deviating, or repeating that much, certainly hoping the others don't spot you. What a charmed life that is! One could be doing heavy lifting somewhere. I might do that afterwards, just for fun, but I don't have to, and that's my point. And a good one it is too, I think you'll all agree. I was once carried aloft after one of these shows by the audience simply because of the verbal dexterity I had shown. I would challenge anyone to say that that was not the most magnificent way to pass your years on this earth. There is no better pastime you could ever enjoy than being a person who sits on the earth. <laughs> Has everybody got? People enjoying it. No, we were being a bit naughty, Tony, and letting you go. And you <laughs> yes. went magnificently with a lot of errors, but uh, you went for 53 seconds, actually. Yay! Oh, so we it was longer your... than that, surely. <laughs> <laughs> that felt like about 25 minutes. <laughs> so we give you a bonus point for okay. what you achieved then, but Jane, you challenged, yeah. which is, of course, for hesitation, because you did stop, mm -hmm. and you take over the subject with seven seconds on A Charmed Life starting now. Being a snake charmer would be a fantastic life that would make you charmed. Only sitting with a basket between one's legs, wondering what would come... <laughs> so, Tony Godley is speaking to the whistle Wayne again. The next point is now equal to Tony Hawks. Tony, after all your efforts, you're, only still, in, you're still training the others by a point or two. Actually, Giles, it's your turn oh, to begin. Yes. And uh, a good one for you, knowing your political background. Diplomatic immunity. 60 seconds starting now. This is a good one for me because I am delighted to talk on this subject as I feel very passionately about it. When I was, in fact, a member of parliament before the people spoke and dismissed me so rudely as they did, I tried to introduce legislation to stop the taking advantage of diplomatic immunity. It all dates back to some legislation in the 1950s called the Vienna Convention that led to the Diplomatic Immunities Act of 1978, which allows Johnny Foreigner into this country with a capacious handbag into which he or she can put anything they damn well like. And they're bringing in the most extraordinary material, I have to tell you. Uh, yes, magazines from Copenhagen, the like of which would make Kit Hesketh's Harvey hair come back. It is extraordinary <laughs> what these diplomats are trying to get away with. They bring in white mice. Yes? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, Tony Challenge. Uh, repetition of bring. Yes, oh. we're bringing in too much, I'm afraid. <laughs> no. It went magnificent. You went for, um... Uh, 13 from 60 is uh, 47. <laughs> 47 seconds, not bad. Very good. Not quite the 53 that he did, gee, but well done. Uh, you were challenged, a correct challenge by Tony. Uh, diplomatic immunity starting now. I have been immunized against diplomats, which means I can never catch one. When I'm chasing one up a road, this is very a disadvantage in many ways if they fall in your hand. Uh, kit challenge. This is very a disadvantage in many ways. Yes. yes. I think deviation, I think from, deviation from, from English from, as we from understand. The, the lovely English tongue that we all share. So it's you've got in with three seconds, uh, Kit, on diplomatic immunity starting now. Talking of sharing tongues, when the whistle is blown in just a minute, it is diplomatic to have immunity. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Kit has Kathabi speaking as a whistle wing gain. That extra point is now one ahead of Giles. <gasps> it's an equal seven, six, five, four in that sequence. And you can work out which one's in which place. <laughs> right. Kit, uh, it's back with you. Would you like to take the next subject? Dressing up. Tell us something about that in this game. You do a fair amount of that in your work, professionally, before appearing before an audience. Talk about it. 60 seconds, as usual, starting now. As Nicholas says, I do dress up a great deal in my work. But more intriguingly, later tonight, if you go down to the docks around the corner here in King's Lynn, you will see a fabulous-looking creature waiting for the Russian sailors to come in, called Nicola. She has lovely long legs and a beautiful chinchilla wrap, and is curiously reminiscent of Nicholas Parsons. But it wouldn't be wise to suggest this, because, in fact, uh, he... <laughs> Giles challenge. Hesitation. Yes, I I'm sorry. Hesitation. It's stuck in my throat. It I did. know. Yes, it did. That's what you said about me. I'm sure it's stuck in your throat. Um, <laughs> so, Giles, you have another correct challenge. You have 36 seconds. Dressing up is the subject, and you start now. When I was a little boy, I had a dressing up box that was supplied by the Old Vic Theatre Company. I had that sort of background. And it was curious because other children would turn up at the parties dressed as, goodness gracious me, Indians and cowboys. But I came as Richard III, a Seven. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by our son of York. I warbled as the other children threw uh, things in my face like... Uh, repetition of children. children. Yeah, there were, there were a lot of children around then. Because you know, all those other children and you warbled and... He well, looked so disappointed he did about a minute in the last round. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So, Tony, a correct challenge. Twelve seconds are still available. You tell us something about dressing up, starting now. It's a Monday night in King's Lynn, so I'm not dressing up. But come Friday, I'll be up here, up and down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kit, you challenge first. It was up and up. Repetition up of. Yes. yes. Six seconds are still available on this subject. Dressing up it is with you, Kit, starting now. I suppose addressing up is the opposite of addressing down. If you say to somebody, you've done really well and I'm extremely proud of you, that could be considered. <laughs> Kit Hesketh Harvey was speaking as a whistle went. He's now moved forward and he's equal in the lead with Giles Brandreth. The other two are only a point or two behind them. Uh, Tony Hawks, it's your turn to begin. And the subject is my superpower. Ooh, says somebody in the audience. Oh, your mother, obviously. And um, <laughs> 60 seconds as usual, starting now. If I was to strip off this beautiful jacket that I'm wearing now, you would see underneath just a minute man written there for I can speak for 60 seconds without hesitating, deviating or repeating and that is enough of a power oh, I did this Charles, yeah. <laughs> you've challenged a hesitation yes, he stopped he, he yes. came to stop yes. out of superpowers and you know I think he got bored with what he was saying actually uh, 44 seconds with you, Giles, on my superpower starting now. My superpower is the United States of America. I know it is fashionable to knock them, but I do think that that isn't fair. My personal superpower, of course, is my sexual charisma. Admittedly, I am only appealing to people who are... Uh, Janie Challenge. I just don't believe them. <laughs> As the only woman on the panel, I have to go with your reaction. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was Giles. I was going on to qualify. I, I love you, but the whole acrylic thing and sexual prowess isn't working for me. <laughs> Come all the way to King's Lynn just to be insulted. <laughs> <laughs> I go all over the country to be insulted. <laughs> so, 32 seconds, Janie, on my superpower starting now. My superpower is my ability to explode electric light bulbs and anything else that can carry a current of any kind. Fridges, microwaves, irons, hair dryers, calculators, computers, laptops, you name it, I've made it break. There is something strangely wrong with me. I may be Electra. That could be my superpower. I once gave a baby a terrible electric shock and its wee hair standed um, on end. Charles Challenge. Sorry, repeat of electric. You had yeah, electric and electric. I know, but people can believe I am electric. <laughs> <laughs> and people can believe I've got sexual charisma. People yeah. won't believe anything nowadays. I agree, I agree. So, Giles, you've got the subject back again. There are eight seconds still for you to go on my superpower starting now. Superpower is to do with energy, verb, and brio. Uh, Tony Challenge. I've got a bit of a headache. <laughs> 
I was Tony. just wondering if he could keep it down a bit. Say the, <laughs> say the same things, but just do it yeah. a little bit worse. Tony anyway, is like sitting next to Giles. and thing in front of you, it's a microphone. Mm. <laughs> it, what it does is it amplifies your voice, you see. So, Tony, you have explained it. <laughs> You're sitting next to him, and his surge of energy like that uh, was overpowering for you. So, the audience loved what you said, so we give you a bonus point for that, Tony. Giles was uh, interrupted, so he gets a point for that. He keeps the subject. There are four seconds still available. My superpower starting now. Some people think that I am on drugs, Class A, of course, because I'm a conservative. But in fact, the truth is that my superpower is natural. So Giles Brandreth is again speaking as a whistle when gain that extra point and he's increased his lead over the other three, ahead of the other three, I should say. Uh, and Giles also, it's your turn to begin. Um, I know you know a lot about this, because it was your era. The Swinging Sixties. That's the subject. Tell us something about it, starting now. I was indeed there the first time around during the Swinging Sixties. <laughs> <laughs> Tony. I think he hesitated. Oh, I, think I can't tell yes. you how happy I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure there was going to be one minute coming out yeah. all about his 60s. What a, what, I think that's a result for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> No, there are 57 seconds still available, and it's with you, Tony. Swinging 60s starting now. They say that if you can remember the swinging 60s, you weren't there. But I was only a wee lad, and I had a very sobriety time. <laughs> challenge. Sobriety time what? Sorry, Tony, yeah, please. No, you're, 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 whatever your challenge is, you're right with it. <laughs> <laughs> 48 seconds are still available. A kid, you tell us something about swinging 60s starting now. I was a child of the 60s, but very sadly, I was a teenager of the 70s, which was when it really mattered. And instead of the Beatles, I got the Bay City Rollers. Instead of Twiggy, it was Thatcher. Uh, uh, Giles Tunch. Instead of, instead. I'm sorry. Instead, I'm sorry, instead, yes. instead. Right, Giles, it's back with you. 38 <laughs> seconds, swinging 60s starting now. I was flattered to be invited to a swinging 60s party recently, and I turned up in my Beatles wig and wearing my flares to find a lot of very old people, naked and wrinkled and rutting. It turned out to be a swingers party for people in their 60s. I was there under a terrible misapprehension. Tony, you challenge. I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> but I think he repeated party. Yes, there was a party there, you yeah. did repeat, yes, you went to a swinging 60s party and I didn't at this party, so, but we did enjoy it immensely, so, um, and, and Tony, so you've got a correct challenge and 22 seconds, swinging 60s starting now. I bought myself some flared trousers, I'd seen some of the other people of the 60s doing that, and I looked terrific. I cut out a little triangle, inserted it into my jeans, but did it in the crutch, which is a mistake. <laughs> and it led to a lot of people asking me what the hell I was wearing and why I... Uh, Giles Challenge. of people. He saw other people yeah, doing do. it. Yes, so that's right. You were right. You don't need to emphasize it. I agree. <laughs> Four seconds on Swinging Sixties, starting now. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. I... Uh, please, uh, please, please, please let it stop. <laughs> So what's your challenge? Sorry, I've seen these images of Giles now, and I think Tony's with me on this one. <laughs> so you think he was into that sex? Assuming... Well, it was deviation, quite clearly, by definition. Uh, why? From the law, sex, drugs, and rock. No. Oh, well, the, the... no, I mean, there was sex, drugs, and rock and was roll. Was there Nicholas? On. Yes, I was around. Where are you? I was part of the scene. You'd like to tell us? But not the drugs. I've never touched drugs. I was certainly... Um, well, it was, I was youthful, so I had a little bit of exceptional experience. Did you? <laughs> I just love the way. I just love the, the way. One. I love the way Nicholas went. I was part of the scene. <laughs> it's just. I actually was. I think it was a very exciting time. I'll tell you something else about the sixties. Tell well, us in a minute, without deviating, hesitating. <laughs> <laughs> The swinging 60s was a very exciting time to be alive. There was sex and there was rock and roll and lots of other things, but there was a great deal of love around. People were giving out to each other. There was the flower people and so forth like that. Also, all kinds of things were happening at that particular time. We were getting rid of archaic and arcane attitudes and behaviors. You know, the Wolfenden Report came out and that was made consenting adults of a different sex acceptable. And my, there, was a, there were also wonderful cabaret shows, sophisticated comedy. It was an amazing time to be alive. Everybody was giving out. They were growing. They were. I'm, 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 you've challenged me, Josh. 
We were almost there. You were almost there. <laughs> yes, I've got one to 57 seconds. Yay! I also met Giles Brandreth in the 60s, didn't I? You did? Uh, yes. Indeed. I was, was getting on to that when I was talking about the party, but... Amazing. Well, you... You, <laughs> you had the challenge and there was three seconds to go, Giles, starting now. Marion Faithful slept in my bed. Maddeningly, I was elsewhere at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we score that particular round, because for once the chairman joined in, and, um, <laughs> and this was to be the last round, and indeed it is, and Giles brought it to an end in style and got that extra point for doing so. Let me give you the final situation. Janie Godley, who contributes so marvellously, but she only did finish in a wonderful fourth place. <laughs> and, um, she was only a couple of points behind our third place, who's Kit Hesketh Harvey. He was... An and he was only one point behind our second place, which is Tony Hawks. <laughs> so obviously you enjoyed the contribution that they all gave, but this time, poetic justice, because last time, if you remember, no, you wouldn't remember. I don't want this, I don't no, want this. This no, is no, too big for me. No, no, no. I'd no, no. like to share last... this victory with Tony. <laughs> Giles is referring Can I tell to you that the McCartneys may not be able to sort things out, but Tony and I... <laughs> Tony and I have come to an amicable agreement. Whenever we appear on this programme mm. together, we will be equal winners! <laughs> I must explain to our listeners that the last time we were in King's Lynn, <laughs> which of course a lot of people here won't know about, but there were only one point separated Tony Hawks and Giles Brandreth, so I put them together as equal winners. And Tony objected, so I had to get him a special round of applause as the winner by one point. So as we had poetic justice, and Giles has beaten him, Tony, on this occasion, I think we should say Giles is our genuine winner. A round of applause for him, please. <laughs> for me to say thank you to these four intrepid and delightful players of the game. Tony Hawks, Giles Brandreth, Janie Godley, and Kit Hesketh Harvey. I also thank Trudy Stevens, who's blown her whistle so well, and also we thank uh, our producer, Talusha Galani. We're indebted to Ian Messiter, who created this amazing game, and we're also grateful to this lovely audience here at the Corn Exchange in Kings Lynn, who've cheered us on our way. From our audience, from me, Nicholas Parsons, and the panel, goodbye. Tune in the next time we play Just a Minute. Yeah. <laughs>